Now, I am going to be speaking about the dark arts in the church. I promise you it's not what you're thinking. It's not going to be what you're thinking. Because I will show you that what you have been fearing is actually the wrong thing. Psalms 121. Psalms 121, start from verse 1. Yes, sir. Who's, who's reading? You, you can read. read. Mm -hmm. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, from whence cometh my help. Mm -hmm. My help cometh from the Lord, mm -hmm. which made heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Mm -hmm. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Mm -hmm. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Mm -hmm. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The mm -hmm. Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The mm -hmm. Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in mm -hmm. from this time forth and even forevermore. Now notice, God has always been dedicated in protecting his people so the psalmist is saying god will watch over you not only now but forevermore yeah. he will watch you when you're going in when you're coming uh, back uh, when you're going in and going out he will watch you when you're sleeping the moon shall not harm you by day nor the the, uh, the moon by night nor the sun by day um, he is your keeper. He does not sleep or slumber. His eyes are consistently on you. I want to tell you something that uh, you have been tricked in believing. God is the only one who protects his church. The reason why God protects his church is because the church is his bride. The church is not about us. It's about him. That is why God has always set a remnant. He has always set his people in every dispensation. He has always ordained his people and he has protected them. Why? Because there is a purpose that is beyond our present comprehension. We understand part of it, a little bit of it, but the meat of the purpose is hidden in God because this is his bride. It doesn't matter what witch, what warlock, what evil spirits try to do against the church. They will never succeed because it's his bride. Amen. I want you to get that clear. The Lord said this to Peter. He said, you are the rock that I will build my church upon. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So even if hell's doors are opened upon the church, it will never prevail. Let me give you an example. Throughout history, Christians have always been persecuted. Right now, uh, if you, I, I was watching something that Candace Owens had uh, posted. She, she was using an AI, an AI, you know, this artificial intelligence. And he said, and somebody wrote, make fun of Jesus. Man, it had jokes forever. Then she wrote, make fun of Muhammad. The AI is programmed. They programmed it to say that it is not right to make fun of other religions and other religious liberties. So I cannot make any jokes about this. But they made fun of Jesus. You can go on any platform, say anything anything about jesus drop 
pictures of Jesus. You throw, draw pictures of their false prophet. The platforms themselves will delete you. They will say you're, di you're discriminating, you're doing hate. But those same people do things against us that we are not permitted to do. But guess what? The church is thriving anyway. Amen. Now, what is the true dark arts in the church? What is it really? What really is it? What really is it? Why is it that it has become a trend that in the church, pastors, and you will notice it never comes from believers mostly, it comes mostly from pastors. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 4. And four. Uh -huh. Now there are diversities of gifts, mm -hmm. but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Mm -hmm. Now notice that. Start again. Verse four. Mm -hmm. Now there are diversities of gifts, mm -hmm. but the same spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Uh -huh. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Uh-huh. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Notice this. There are diversities of gifts. Diversities of what? Administration. And what was the other one? Diversity of what? Administration. Operations. operations. Diversity of gifts, operation, and administration. Diversity of gifts operation and administration but it is the same lord that works in all of them mm -hmm. i'll say that one more time there are diversities of gifts diversities of operations and diversities of administrations what does that mean two people with the same gift may use the same gift differently yeah. it doesn't mean one is a witch one is a wizard Amen. Amen. i don't know if you can hear me yeah. it is not that it is a different god it is Jehovah God, it's Elohim, it's El Shaddai. But because there is diversity mm -hmm. of administration, diversity of operation, mm -hmm. and the diversity of, of gifts, not just the gifts, but, the, but even the depth of the gift. Yes. Some, those who, especially those who have been in the church, those who have been in the church longer and those who are infants in the church have a problem with this because of one thing. Either their past, dis their past disappointments or their past hurts, which are valid in some sense, but they are not valid when you become a minister. You leave those things behind. Amen. Or how long they have been in the church and they have never seen such a thing. So because it is foreign to them, mm -hmm. it is evil and it is demonic. Yeah. The biggest dark art in the church is people speaking out of where they should be speaking of. That is what is destroying the church. Witchcraft is not destroying the church. Sorcery is not destroying the church. These things are of no effect God is way more powerful than any of these things will ever come close. Think about me. They say, well, you, you, you impart, he imparts demons by laying hands on people. It's so many people, you know. 
They say, ah, he lays hands on people and imparts demons into people. Okay, how did I impart demons into Houston? A whole arena of people saying, come out in the name of Jesus. Ah, hundreds of people being delivered at the same time. How did we impart demons? I even asked other men of God that were there to assist in helping them. When we speak from a place of ignorance, when we speak from a place of ignorance, what happens is this. We do more damage than the devil could have ever done to the church. Yeah. We do more damage than the devil would have ever been able to do in the church. Listen, I hear from the Lord Jesus. I hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hear from God. I hear from angels. I'm unashamed of it. It's the way God speaks to me. So if somebody has never operated in that place. They'll say it's using familiar spirits. But yet there's no scripture to back it up. It's suspicion. Many of you are robbed. Of the depths of God. Of the power of God. Of the might of God. Because superstition or superstitious people have told you what God did in the Old Testament. You don't need to do it in the New Testament. The New Testament is completely different from the... Who told you that? That's not exactly true. There are things that we don't need to do. But doesn't mean that doing them, it is witchcraft. It's a lie. Anyone who tells you God does not need to use anointing oil. Yes, it's true. God does not need to. But he chose to. So what? Yeah. Yeah. God does not need to do anything. He is God. He can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it. That is God. Right? Yes. He does what he wants. So you can't say God would not do that. The moment you say he cannot, he is no longer God. You don't need to see people fall. Wait. Of course we don't. But does it mean if they fall, it's demonic? Because people who dispute this, they speak from a place of intellectualism. Not spirituality. Not spiritual at all. Some people are so obsessed with the devil. That all they preach is deliverance and demons. There's no other message. It's good to teach about deliverance. But deliverance is more about Jesus than it is about demons. The more you fall in love with Jesus, the more you know Jesus, the more demons have no place. It's not about teaching about, oh, witches can use uh, salt. They can use uh, this. They can use that. So and so. It, it's crazy to me. It is the most childish thing in the church. But all these things are happening because people are speaking from a place of ignorance and foolishness. To the point that they will take the witness of a demon. A demon who is destined for hell. A liar from the beginning. Did you hear what the demon said? Yeah, the demon said that. Wait, what? What? Did you just agree with the devil because he's backing you up? Yet the Bible tells you you do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Do you see how crazy and weird that is? That I will take the witness of a demon to say that man is false. Yeah, the devil said it. Even the demon said I came from him. Yeah, Jesus is telling you, uh, a kingdom divided amongst itself 
will never stand. Do you know what that means? The devil never gives up his comrades. Then how will he continue to do damage? In finishing. Come out of superstition. It is the greatest form of witchcraft in the church. Yes. 